What is happening guys? Welcome back. So, plan today is to get a little bit more done on this XV750 build. Now in the last episode, we got all of the wiring loom and the end unit, the battery and everything mounted, fitted and all the lights and everything working, although it was a hell of a mess. So I can't leave anything alone and my OCD was going mad. So I've been in, it still isn't perfect and it still isn't how I want it, but I've come in and I've shortened the loom a little bit, ran things a little bit neater, drilled some holes to allow cables through. Now, the yes, they do need a grommet fitting. No, they haven't got a grommet fitted at the minute, but we are only dry building it. This plate is going to be taken off, redrawn, laser cut um, and folded to be neat because it's a mess. I've mounted this inline fuse. If you remember before, we had a fuse just sat down here. So I've mounted this fuse from the battery here, which then powers the M unit, just so it's a little bit neater. We've rerouted cables in different ways. Um, these cables come up under the seat here. Cables from the rear light come through here. And again, yes, they're rubbing and touching on bits of metal and things, but we are going to be trimming all this lot back so that nothing will rub on it. We won't get any arcing or earthing or anything like that. It won't be a problem. This is literally just a dry build stage. So. There's a couple of little bits that I want to get sorted on it this week, but the first one being, let's talk about this rear wheel. So in a previous episode, you might recall that we discussed this rear wheel and what we were going to do with it to try and make it fit in a little bit better with the front wheel. Now, a couple of design ideas that we had. One was I was going to cut a complete full aluminium disc to completely block the whole back wheel in, which I do quite like as a design idea. The other one was we were going to cut some bits of aluminium put them into there to cover that spoking so it is no longer through. It is a solid spoke, which would have been a great, nice design idea, I think. Might have been a bit of a pain to carry it out, but I still wasn't quite happy with it. So did a bit of looking on the internet and things, and the second generation um, XV750, the rear wheel's got straight spokes, although that wheel is a 15 by 2.75 wheel. This one is 16 by three. I didn't want to go dropping down the size because the front's already a 17, so I didn't want to go dropping down to a 15. So a bit more looking, and we've found this. Which is a 16 by three, so it's the same size as the wheel we've got, and it is from an XJ700. So yeah, we've found that. So it just looks a bit nicer. It's five spoke design, so it just looks a bit more sort of, I suppose, modern and newer, even though it is shaft drive, which is quite an old technology and it has got a drum brake. Now, one thing you do need to watch out on, which I got caught out on, is the, the brake drum or the brake shoes and all this, this here is bigger than the one that is on the bike. That one will go inside there and won't work. So you do need to make sure that you buy all of the brake shoes and everything like that as well. So, first job, Let's get this fitted to the bike. So here are the wheels off and they're Exactly the same on the inside, but we just got it, just looks much nicer of a spoke design. fitted on and looking much better and much more in keeping and a little bit more modern with the straight spokes. So that's one job done that we wanted to do, which is nice and easy. Now, next thing we want to do, start looking at this seat. So I've made, obviously, the seat hoop we saw in a few episodes ago. I've made now the seat base here, which is what the foam is going to be stuck onto, but we need a way of fixing that to this. Now, I've got an idea of how I'm going to do it. What I've also cut is this plate here, which goes underneath the seat like that. Now this is going to be flush with here, all welded so it's nice and flat. And it stops just in front of the regulator rectifier. 
So, job now, get this off, work out how we're gonna mount the seat base to this, then weld this on, then we can put it on, put the tank on, cap the back of the tank off, and start shaping the foam. Apparently I didn't bother explaining what I was doing with this uh, seat mounting. So what I'm doing here is cutting two pieces of one mil steel to 30 mil wide. We're gonna then weld them onto this seat hoop so they're flush to the top, which is what I'm using the rule for there to make sure they're flush. Grinding that back so they're nice and flush with the top of it. That's therefore flush with the bottom of the seat base that we're gonna be putting on top. I then drilled two six mil holes in that. Well, I think there were six and a half for clearance. And I've then drilled and tapped M6 threads into the seat base itself. So we can just use some normal M6 bolts to hold it down. After a bit of faffing, there we go. So it isn't the neatest. It still does need a bit of fettling and sorting. And I'm having a problem with this new welder now in that it's not feeding the wire properly every time you pull the trigger. It doesn't feed wire every time you pull the trigger. It feeds wire every sort of three or four times or sometimes it's just not working. So I need to get it sorted out. But anyway, I've managed to do my best and get this sort of welded and dressed to a point. I still need to go back in and fill some of these low spots when we've got the welder fixed. This side's even worse because the welder was just getting worse, but you get the idea of what we're going for. Under here, I've welded this plate on completely to box all that in. And again, it's got low points and all sorts because the welder was just wasn't playing ball. So as soon as we get the welder fixed, we'll be finishing those bits, but the welder's working enough to tack things together. So what we're gonna move on to now is capping the back of the tank off. So what we wanna do is cap the back of this fuel tank off and then we're gonna make and cut another piece that will weld to this, that will come up the back of the tank. Then the upholstery will go round there as well. So what we need to do is cut a piece out for this, tack it on, and then we'll cut a piece out for the seat and tack that to the seat. to get this plate on then and get a little bit of weld on before the welder started really playing up. It seems to do it when it's warm, so I don't know if there's something inside that's not quite right. But we've got that back piece on, it curves that way. It sort of straightens out a bit at the bottom because obviously this is there's all sort of complex shapes going on. Seat base I've cut down so that we'll be able to get it back off again. And then I've made this two mil piece that we're gonna now tack to the seat base because we want the foam to come up here as well. Now this is bent that way, sort of bent that way, and then we've put that little turn on the end so that it fits something along them lines. Now obviously it's gonna have a, uh, foam on it and then fabric wrapping around it, so all these gaps and things will be gone. We have that all done, etch primed, ready to go really. Um, I've still got to obviously cut these down because you don't want to be sitting on them even though we are putting foam in it, which is the next step. So what we're using is 25 mil or inch, I think it's called reconstituted foam. It's just loads of different bits of foam that have been sort of glued together I assume to make a big sheet. I did order this, which is I think two inch, it's just too thick. But what we're gonna do is use bits of this to make the front piece. So what we're gonna do, 
We're going to bond that on there, cut it to the right shape, get a piece of this, thicker stuff, put it onto the front like that, cut it to the shape around there, and then we're going to sculpt it and mould it into the shape that we want. So let's get on with that. That is that, bonded on. So yeah, all I've done is just used contact adhesive. Now this is high temp stuff that I use when I did the Caddy, when I did the T5. I've used it for years and years and years. It's brilliant stuff. That's what I've used to glue it on, laid it on. It's just contact adhesive. Spray it on, let it go off so it's just before it's dry on both pieces, push them together and that will stick. So what I'm gonna do now is, I've got 40 grit, flat disc on the grinder and we're now going to go around, smooth all the edges out, blend everything in, round the edges off and get it looking nice. And there we go, seat foam is shaped to how I want it to be, it looks absolutely mega. Now we're going to be covering this in a suede material, sort of like an Alcantara with various different stitching details on it. But that shape just looks so nice on that bike with that seat frame and with that fuel tank. It looks so good. I'm so happy with how it's turned out. It was, I have to say, shaping that was a hell of a lot easier than I expected as well. I expected it to be a bit of a pain because the, it's quite grippy and various different things, but that looks absolutely mega and it looks exactly like the image I had in my head before we started. So two more pretty big things sorted. Rear wheel looks absolutely mega and looks so much nicer than the other one. Seat frame is obviously welded to a point. I still need to finish it off, so I never finish anything off. Seat foam or seat base is all done, sorted, made. End of the tank's capped off and now the foam is all shaped and sorted out ready for the upholsterer to work their magic don't know what i'm going to be up to in the next one there's so much still to do to it i can't decide what i want to do next but hopefully you've enjoyed this one until next time enjoy